All right, here we go. We have returned. We have we are back from our little break. I hope everybody had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And we hope that everybody has a great Christmas as we as we approach the end of your holidays. Just gonna wait for a few folks to start trickling in. You can jump in, Dan, and let me know. Uh, <clears throat> this webinar is, by the way, this webinar is centered around a request from Diane Sunley. So thank you, Diane, for throwing this uh, request. She threw a few requests in, and unfortunately, we couldn't squeeze them into one webinar. Or I, I guess fortunate, because we have quite a bit of content to cover based on that request. <clears throat> so again, if you guys have your own requests or comments about webinars in the future, hey, feel free to throw in some, uh, throw in some suggestions because we're definitely we are definitely here to listen to you guys build build these presentations around what you guys uh, are asking for. So before we get started, I do want to remind you guys how to join us in the presentation today. You can raise your hand with Alt plus Y on your Windows or Command plus Y on your Mac. To raise your hand on your telephone, if you're a dial-in caller, star nine. And if you cannot talk to us for whatever reason that may be, Alt plus H and Command plus H will do the job of opening the, the, uh, the question box and you can put in whatever question you may have. Dan will screen your hands and your questions throughout the duration of today's presentation. And it'll be just myself and Dan again today. And today we will be presenting a, a primer, if you will, on navigation, uh, storage, and organization of files and folders in both or across three platforms, the three, what I consider the three most used and popular platforms for any sort of technology and OS or OS, if you will. Uh, that would be Windows PC, of course. We will also demonstrate to you how you can manage your files on iOS and Android. Now, one is more robust than the other as far as the level of file management and how much uh, you can you can do in there as far as uh, you know renaming things or what sort of files you can open or how to transfer files over to that device. But we will definitely cover that as the presentation rolls on tonight. Uh, I do, however, want to start off with Windows. And just so you guys know, I will be using JAWS for Windows. Most of this works with Narrator. I've tested it. Most of this works with Narrator because the keystrokes introduced here are not JAWS specific. So that's good if you're using Narrator, if you're using a NVDA, if you will. Uh, this will show you how to navigate your, your file explorer. And that's what we'll be using in, uh, in Windows. The way to organize your files, to uh, view your files, to interact with them at any capacity would be through the File Explorer app, right? And this is just essentially your library of files. And we'll start off by opening the File Explorer. And you can open the File Explorer anywhere on the PC with the key command, or what I like to call cord, Windows plus E. And I call this a cord. I, when I teach class, I let my students know what a cord is because to me, cording a key command is like cording a piano note. For example, you hold down two or three notes at once. Or you, when, you, uh, when you cord on a guitar, you hold two, three frets, different strings. Those, those three frets produce one note. Similarly, when you chord commands on your keyboard, two, three, four keys pressed simultaneously are gonna cause one action to occur, right? For example, Windows plus E will open File Explorer. And when I say Windows plus E, I don't mean Windows, the plus sign and E, I use plus as an additional, uh, as an additional definition, as in Windows and E. So what I will do now is I will hold down one key, the Windows, and then I will press the E. I won't let my Windows go, but I will press the E. Once I press E, I will let both of these go. So let's do it right now. Windows, E. 
E. This PC. Items view multi select list box. Folders expanded. Not selected. 3D objects not checked. One to one. To move to an item, press the arrow keys. Not checked. So you heard there are a few things. You heard Windows E. So that's the I typed in. Then you heard File Explorer. That means I am now in the File Explorer. And then you heard Items View. And then you heard Most Recent. So let's break that down a little bit. <clears throat> when you first open File Explorer, you'll be dropped into what's called the Items View. The Items View of the File Explorer essentially, essentially like a, a massive repository. I'm mean, not a, a massive, not a massive repository. I'd like to say it's a list of all of your of your files and all of your folders. And the item view is where you can go to view, uh, you know, your your files, if you will. And this is where all of the interaction with your files will take place. You can also interact with folders here, but we will be using something a little different to give these folders and this this uh, system some linearity, give it some structure. That way we know where everything is at all times. So. Once again, Windows plus E is going to activate your file explorer. And then you're gonna see yourself dropped into the item view. Then you will see yourself here in the most recent. And what this is, it's a list of the most recent files and the most recent folders that you've interacted with. So if you know that something that you recently opened is something that you're going to work on again, as soon as you hit Windows E, you can just start hitting down arrow or you can use first letter navigation if you know the exact name of your file. For example, I'm gonna go ahead and hit down arrow and move through our most recent folders. Folders left parent seven, right parent row header expanded. 3D objects, downloads, videos, check devices and drives expanded. Devices and drives left parent one, OS left parent, network location, light. See, and so there's a few different things that you heard. You heard folders, then you heard drives, and then you heard network locations. So let's break this down a little bit more before I show you how I go about structuring my file system or my file uh, organization, if you will. So the Windows environment and most environments are broken up into three distinct things. We have drives, we have folders, and we have files. A drive is essentially the big tree, the, the big, you know, the big, uh, the big book, if you will, the book in, in the folders or the pages and the files are the words, if you will. Uh, a better analogy, I guess, would be that each drive is a floor in a building and each folder is a room inside of that building. And each file can be a desk or a person situated inside of that building, a piece of information in that building. Of course, you can have multiple rooms inside of one room, those being subfolders. Let's say you have a, an office building one floor has a suite of offices. That suite, that lobby, is the first level in that in that uh, that folder. Uh, the any offices inside of that suite would be sub offices. So these would be subfolders, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is how the uh, system works. So we have our drives. Most most systems will only have one internal drive. That would be the uh, the local disk, and you'll see that at the bottom. That local disk is where all of your programs, where all of your uh, user information, where all of your system files are stored. So it's pretty important. I wouldn't mess around too much inside the C drive unless you know what you're doing, uh, but it's there. Uh, another internal drive that you might have, but it's hidden by default is what's called a recovery drive. So if something happens to your PC, you can use this recovery partition and you can restore it to its uh, default factory settings. Now, keep in mind, this will erase everything on your C drive. Everything on your C drive, boom, gone. Your files, your folders, your system files will be reset to no, to zero. And uh, you'll have a brand new PC, just as if you took it out of the box. This should only be used, of course, if you have some sort of a really dire situation. All right, so let's not talk too much about that, but it is there. Uh, and, and you can use it if you need to. Now let's talk about what happens after we press Windows E. All right, after we press Windows E, we're here in the item view and we're here in the most recent files, folders and drives list, okay? Now let's say one of the folders or files we want to access is not in this most recent list, right? Let's say this folder is not here. Okay, let's find it now. 
We can do this by using Shift F6, and in Microsoft products, Shift F6 or F6 will cycle you through what are called the different panes of the program. And what a pane is, it's just another section of the program. For example, if you're using the uh, Google Chrome web browser or Internet Explorer, you have your, your main pane where your web page content is stored, you have your address bar, you have a menu bar with different options, and you might have the tabs bar with a list of all the different tabs you have open. Those are simply different sections of the program and visually they're laid out across your screen. So uh, it makes more sense if you look at it uh, visually, but that's essentially what I'm referring to different aspects or sections of the program. And in this case, we have the item view, which is the main section where all of our uh, files and folders can be accessed. We also have what's called the Windows Explorer view or the tree view. And it's just like it sounds, it's a tree view. It's, it, it puts all the folders and drives in your, in your, uh, in your system in a way that you can browse uh, by using a tree-like format. So let's explore it before I actually talk more about it. So once again, let me close my file explorer to give you guys a better idea of how to get here. So I'll okay. alt F4 to close it. Now I'll do Windows E to open file explorer. Windows E, this PC, items view, multi select list box, folders expanded, not selected 3D object. All right, now I'm gonna shift F6 once. And the reason I'm not gonna F6 is because if you F6, you would it would take you to different sections of the program so optimally to be more efficient, I'm gonna shift F6 and it's gonna take me to the last item in this program, which would be the tree view. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit shift F6. Shift F6, tree view, level one. This PC open 10 items to move through or expand items, use the arrow keys. There you heard a few things. Tree view, okay. You heard uh, this PC opened. That means that the, the focus is on the folder, this PC is. This PC is the main drive of the computer. All of your system folders, all of your, your drives will be inside of here, okay? And then you heard one of 10, which means there are 10 folders and drives, the combination of the two on my this PC folder or drive, okay? Think of this PC as your master folder. It cannot go any higher than this PC. This PC contains your whole computer's information from the Windows operating files to the uh, recipe you wrote that your grandma shared with you. Everything in between that is housed in this PC. It's just housed in different floors, different rooms, and different environments, different parts of the building, all right? This PC is the building, and each drive and folder is a, is a floor on that building. Now, let's explore this. You heard it say to expand, press the right arrow. I'm gonna go ahead and collapse it actually with the left arrow. You're gonna hear a few things when I do this. I'm gonna go ahead and hit left arrow to collapse this. This PC closed, closed, one of two. Okay. Level zero. Now you heard it say level zero, this PC. Level zero means just that. In the, our file structure, level zero is the master level. There are three things in here or two things I believe. And one of those is this PC, all right? That means this computer is broken up into two or three big chunks of things. So let's go through here and see what they are. I'll start at the top. Level zero, quick access closed, closed, one of two. All right, we have the quick access. And just like in the item view, this is just a list of the most accessed or the, uh, the things that you access the most, right? You can also pin things in here. Think of a favorites bar on the web browser. That is going to have different things that you can pin to it. So when you come in here, you can pin a folder deep inside the system. Let's say it's like five or six folders deep. You can pin it to the quick access and then you can come here, hit right arrow. Access opened, open eight items. Now you heard it say quick access opened eight items, which means there are eight items inside of my quick access folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and down arrow. Level one, desktop left parent pin right parent not checked, not downloads left parent pin right parent documents left parent pin right. And there you heard a list of things. You heard level one, and that makes sense, right? Because level zero is where I started from. Level one is the quick X, or when I hit right arrow on quick access, I'm now inside of it. And it's showing me all of the different things inside 
the quick access folder. And that's level one, right? Because I finally entered the building, I'm on the first floor, right? So let's get out of quick access. And we do that by hitting left arrow. Quick access closed, closed. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and hit down arrow. Level one, this PC closed, closed, one of two. This PC, and that says level one. It, it, even though it says level one, it, it's still this PC, right? So let's hit down arrow. Let, let's say we had a, another drive on this folder. Let's say we had this, uh, uh, let's say we had this PC divided into different uh, partitions or drives. Well, that level zero would have those different partitions. Let's say you had another version of Windows installed or a different uh, operating system. This, that level zero would contain those things. So don't worry too much about that. So we right here, we have this PC. I'm gonna down arrow one more time. Network closed, closed. Network, and that's it. I can't down arrow anymore, just silence. Network is gonna contain things like your network drives in a professional environment. That might be a, some sort of network drive where uh, a lot of your company files are stored. But for this sakes, we're just going to focus on this PC, okay? Nothing else matters on this presentation. This PC is where we'll be, where we'll be doing all of our, um, all of our navigation. So let's up arrow once to this PC. PC left level one. This PC closed. Close. All right. Now let's hit right arrow to see what's inside of this PC. PC open. Open. Ten items. Ten items. So let's go through these ten items, and we're gonna see a few different things in here. Level two. Three D objects closed. Close. So level two. We're inside of this PC. All right, 3D objects is the first folder. Desktop closed. Desktop. Documents closed. closed. Documents. Downloads closed. Downloads. Closed. Music closed. closed. Music. Pictures closed. closed. Pictures. Videos closed. Videos. OS left parent. OS. Oh, and check this Video. out. Right after pictures, we have. OS left parent C colon right parent closed. Closed. We heard OS C colon. So that C colon tells you you're at your local disk. It's called OS nowadays, but it's also what your local disk drive is. So if you hear a letter after the name, like OS C colon, now you're at a drive. And if I were to write arrow on this, I would pull up a list of system folders. Let's do that right now. Left parent C colon, right parent open, open, 12 items. We have 12 items inside the OS C drive. Level three. Absolutely. And if I down arrow, I'll be in level three, right? Level one was this PC. Level two is whatever folders are inside of this PC. And now level three is the C drive, the OS, which is inside of this PC. And now we are looking at the folders inside of this PC. Apps closed. closed. Apps. Dell closed. Dell Dell downloads. Closed. downloads. Closed. Drivers, closed. drivers. Okay. And I already hit right arrow on drivers. Open. Open. Level four. Input closed. closed. I'd be in. Uh, driver's folder, which would be level four. I'm in the fourth folder inside of this PC. So this PC is the first folder. OS is the second folder. Uh, the uh, driver's is the third folder. So I'm in level four right now. And any folder inside of here would take me to level five. Okay. So let's say I wanted to select one of these folders. So I'm going to go ahead and I want to see what's inside. Network closed. Input closed. Just the input folder. Again, this is just a system folder. I don't recommend messing around in here if you don't know what you're doing, but we're not going to actually open any files, but I do want to show you how to see what's inside of a folder. Notice when we're cycling through this tree view, we're only seeing file, I mean, folders and drives. That's because in the tree view, you can only see what are folders and drives. You can't see files. I love using this when I teach because it gives students a strong understanding of how your file, your folders are structured. How, you know, when you make a folder and you put it inside another folder, now you've created a subfolder or a sub level in your navigation, right? So, and when you have the, uh, the item view can, while the item view can navigate you by folders and files, the item view doesn't have a structure that, that uh, lets you know exactly what, what level you're in. It doesn't tell you the, uh, it doesn't tell you exactly what folder you're in at all times. There are different ways. You can use the item view if you wish, but it's a, it's a little bit more disorienting. So I always recommend coming to the tree view to find your folder and then F6ing back to the, uh, to the uh, item view to see what files are inside. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, instead of right arrowing on this, uh, let's see what this folder was. 
preview level four input closed one of instead of right arrowing on input i'm going to go ahead and just hit enter on it all right i hit enter on it now auditorily nothing happened however oh. Sorry about that hold on shift my phone I, I bumped my phone there we go however visually something did happen in the item view the uh, focus has changed now in, inside of the input folder. So I'm going to go ahead and F6. Six, items new multi-select list box, not selected 33 CDY, not checked. 7 slash 16 slash 20, 26, 22 PM file folder, one to one to move. Okay, we have one thing in here and it's a file folder. So after hitting enter on a folder inside of the tree view, now you can see what folders and files are inside of it by hitting F6. Now you can see what folders are inside of a folder simply by right arrowing and you know checking out what's inside of there with the down arrow. However, you can't see what files are inside if your focus is on preview. So I'm gonna go find the documents folder because that obviously is gonna have some files inside of it. So I'm gonna shift F6. Shift F6, preview level four, input closed one of three. Okay, I'm gonna left arrow till I'm back to my this PC Drivers club level two. OS left parent. OS left parent C colon right parent level one. This PC open. Open. Enter. All right. I'm in this PC and I just left arrow it a few times and each press of the left arrow collapsed this tree by a level. Right. So now I'm going to go find documents. And instead of down arrowing and up arrowing a bunch of times, I'm just going to press D because I know my folder begins with the letter D. You can use first letter navigation in both the tree view and item view to move by those different things. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and hit D. Two. Desktop closed. Desktop. Closed. I'm gonna hit D again. D. Documents closed. Closed. All right. So right now you heard documents closed. I'm gonna go ahead and hit right arrow to show you what folders are inside my documents folder. It's open. Open. Nine items. Level three. Add archives. One of class notes closed. Custom office templates. Excel closed. One note notebooks. Outlook files. Red central meetings. Solidity. Zoom. Level two. Downloads. Level. So there are nine folders in there. Zoom is my last folder in my documents folder. If you run out of folders and you press down arrow again, level two, downloads closed. You'll just be brought back to the previous level you were on, but on the next folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and up arrow to get back to the last folder of the uh, documents. Okay. Three, zoom, nine, so, and notice how zoom, it doesn't say closed, right? But notice how. Solidity. Great uh, central meetings, Outlook files, OneNote notebook, Excel closed. Excel, it says closed. That's because the Excel folder that I have has subfolders inside of it, but the Zoom folder, the Ring Central meetings, those don't say closed because if I hit right arrow in there, there are no more folders to show, right? This is why I love this so much. If you were in the item view, you would not know that there are no folders inside of this folder because it doesn't tell you that, you know, that there's no folders inside. The closed is an indicator of, hey, there are still more levels to go. There are folders inside of this folder, there's at least one folder inside of this folder. I know when Excel says closed that there is another folder to go inside of here. I'm gonna hit right arrow on Excel. Excel open, open, four items, level four, assignment closed, closed. And there are four items in Excel and there are more folders inside. Level four, assignment closed. Aside assign, assignments, I'm gonna hit right arrow on assignments. Assignment open, open, one item, level five, today's class assignments, one open. And today's class assignments is the dead end of this of this root each single folder think of it as a root each path each path right each path has an end and you can see the path on the address bar just like the internet that's a little bit more advanced but if you hit alt d in here the address bar is is, is in the file explorer and it'll say something like c colon backslash documents backslash excel backslash assignment backslash today's class assignment that's the uh, the path that i took to get here now, there is nothing more to go. There, there are no folders in here, but there might be documents. So what I'm gonna do, five today's plus assignments. It's gonna hit enter on this. Enter. All right. Now let's see what folders are and what files are inside of the today's class assignments. I'm gonna hit F6 to move back to the item view. 
Six items new multi select list box not selected 2018 zero sum budget not checked Microsoft Excel worksheet 15 KB no 32 KB 54 percent 2 slash 19 slash 2018 8 13 a.m. 1 to 5. There are five documents in here, and I know there are five documents in here because there was no closed indicator on this folder, right? I knew it was the end of this path, so this end this path send has five choices. We have five files we can activate. We can hit enter on these to launch. For example, this one told me it was an Excel, Excel spreadsheet. If I hit enter here, it's gonna open the correct application, Microsoft Excel, okay? So for me, this is how I go about things. This is how I navigate folders. This is how I teach people how to find things because it gives you a clear indication of where to go, how to get there. And it also sort of lets you know how deep is this file? How big is the structure that I'm building, right? You can build a structure where everything you own, every file you have that you interact with is in one folder. So there might not even be a need to come to the tree view, right? You could stick everything on your desktop if you wanted to. But where's the organization? Now the desktop is cluttered and you might have hundreds of different files to go through, right? So my suggestion is, categorize folders, name them uh, with appropriate names, put them in places and you know sort through them in this fashion. That way you know where everything is. And it looks very professional too, at a professional level, that looks very organized. Now, there are a few more things that I wanted to show you. Once you get into the item view, you can start interacting with files. From the tree view, you cannot interact with files, right? you have to be able to uh, come to the item view to do things to files. That includes things like renaming them. And I'm just gonna go through a few different things here. So I'm gonna go ahead and the spreadsheet, I'm gonna go ahead and try to rename it. You can rename things by hitting the F2 key. Two. Uh, oh. the F2. Uh, let's see. F2. What's going on? Oh, I think this is a protected folder. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift F6. I think that's a protected Shift. folder. So I cannot rename the files inside. I'm going to go ahead and come back to the left here. Level level three drivers closed. Level four, right. level D, level two D. Documents open. Open. I'm going to go ahead and open level documents. Notes and, and you know what? Two. I want to show you one last thing here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Enter on documents. Instead of hitting right arrow to open it inside of the tree view, I'm going to hit arrow. I mean, I'm going to hit Enter. This is going to open the documents folder. I'm going to hit F6 now. F6, items new multi select list box, not selected, add archives, not checked. So now here are my folders from the tree view, right? So I'm going to go ahead and arrow past these. Custom fix, one outlook, grid central, solidity, check, zoom, check. All right, now notice when I down arrow, there are going to be diff more options past zoom. The first document, Lords of Lemons, sensitivity training. So there are now files. We have our we have in our item view, we, on top, we always have whatever folders are inside of here, right? But below those folders are whatever, doc, uh, whatever files are inside of this folder. So inside of a folder, you can have folders that go to different locations or different folders, or you can just have documents. That document symbolizes the end of the path, right? That folder has both more branches to go down, or you can just chill here and select one of the leaves or one of the documents and hit enter on it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and interact with this uh, Lords of Lemons file. That's one of my class uh, curriculum files for Excel. So I'm gonna go ahead and interact with that. Lords of Lemons. I'm gonna hit F2 to try and rename it. F2, edit, Lords of Lemons, type of text. And now you heard F2, edit, Lords of Lemons. If I wanted to, I could rename this. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename it. So I'm gonna select all and backspace to delete all of this content, uh, Lords of Lemons, it's gone now. I'm gonna go ahead and type Eric Excel class document checked. Now I've renamed it and now it's Eric's Excel class document. And this structure is goes alphabetically. So it's been automatically moved to the correct section or position in the list. Now I know that the uh, Eric's class Excel document is in the correct location. It's before an F document and it's after a document with the letter D or uh, a letter that precedes the letter E. Okay, now there are 
I wanted to show you also how you can copy and paste a document. Let's say you want to move this document to a flash drive. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my flash drive to my USB drive. Of course, a flash drive is an external drive. It's used to store things like um, files and folders, but you can move it around from computer to computer. It's really convenient. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in if I can. It's such a small, tiny thing. There we go. Oh, this one's called Dorian, but we won't see what's inside. I, it's just a, it's a friend's flash drive. <laughs> I forgot to rename it. Uh, we shared notes back when we were uh, st uh, students. So forgive the name, but still, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this Excel file into that flash drive. Okay. So I'm going to come to the, I'm going to put focus on the, on the file and I'm going to do control C initiate copy. I could do control C to create a copy, or I can do control X to literally pick that file up and deposit it somewhere else. All right, that's the difference between control X and control C. Copy will copy something and cut will take that something, pick it up and throw it somewhere else, making it disappear from its initial place. So for now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit control C to copy this. Selections of clipboard. All right, now I'm going to do control, I mean, shift F6 to get back to the tree view. Shift F6, tree view, level two, documents open, nine items. I'm going to close documents. Documents closed, closed, three of 11. I'm going to close this PC as well. This PC closed. closed. All right, now we're back at the first level. I'm going to write it all to this PC. Level two, documents closed, closed, three of 11. I know my drives are at the very bottom of this PC, so I'm going to go ahead and down arrow. Close. Pictures closed. Videos closed. OS left parent C colon right parent open. Open. Oh, I'm going to left arrow to close OS. Left. So this is very smart. It keeps the last folder or drive that was opened opened, but you can simply close it by left arrowing on it. Now I'm going to arrow past the OS. Left parent C videos. Oh, Dorian H left parent. There it is. Right parent closed. Closed. Dorian H. That wasn't there before because I had not plugged it in yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit enter on this. I'm going to hit F6. F6, items view, multi-select list box, not selected career guidance, not. And now I'm just going to hit control V to paste it. Paste it from clipboard, Eric's Excel. And now we've now moved a piece of content from my computer onto this physical flash drive. So if you had something you want, needed to take to class for a presentation or something that you wanted to share with a coworker but didn't have an email, or it was something that you just wanted to, uh, oh, you could do this with a folder as well. Let's say you wanted to copy a whole folder of content and give it to someone. That's how you do it. You move it to a flash drive and then you can remove uh, remove the flash drive from your computer and just hand that to someone. Now they have a whole, a whole curriculum, if you will. The last thing I wanted to showcase here is you can also make new folders and that's done with control shift N. Control shift N, edit new folder, type in text. And by default, it's named new folder. I'm going to hit backspace to delete that. Okay, and now I can name this T test T folder. T I'll hit enter. enter. Items new multi select list box, test folder check. Well, see, now it's test folder and it puts the focus on the new folder that I've created. I can hit enter on here to open it and there will be nothing inside. Test folder, items new list box. See, to nothing in here. Items view list box. There is nothing inside of this folder because I just made it. There can't be anything inside. I could take another folder and copy it and then paste it in here. And now there's a folder inside of a folder that I just copied. So once again, control C to copy, control V to paste at your destination, F2 to rename, delete will, the delete or backspace keys will delete whatever you have focus on. And, uh, Control Shift N will create a new folder. There's a lot more you can do here, but really, this is the this is all you need to know to get your your organization system up and running. Right? You can create folders inside of your folders. You can navigate using the tree view by folders and drives, and you can use the item view to interact with the respective folders and drives and files. Remember that inside of the tree view, you can't initiate any interactions as far as copying or pasting. So find your folder, the folder, for example, if you wanted to copy a folder, you would find the folder that houses this. For example, if I wanted to uh, copy the folder I just created, what I would do 
is I would go to the tree view, I would put focus on the Dorian H flash drive, and then I would hit enter on it. Then I would hit F6 and find the folder that I just created. Then I would do something like control C on it, like I just showed you. So that, that's really the, how, how to go ahead and uh, manage your file system. It's all in the handout too. I know it's a lot of different key commands and steps that I just covered, but if uh, you do, you want to use the handout as a reference point, it's right there. I've detailed everything I've just said. Uh, and that is, you've just essentially uh, done a secretary's job, 90% of it. <laughs> I'm just joking, but you've got the filing part down on your Windows PC. And if you can do that, you're, you're well, in, you're pretty ahead of the game, right? So that's how you take care of your files and folders and drives on your Windows PC. Next, we're gonna kick it over to Dan because Dan is gonna show you how robust the Android is as a file manager. So I'll let Dan take it away. <clears throat> Alrighty, folks, good evening. Uh, so Android is pretty robust. It's very, very flexible. Um, there's, first and foremost, with Android, there are, you have a lot of flexibility in what kind of a file manager you use. So with Windows, you have uh, Windows Explorer, which is the default uh, file explorer on Android. If you have a Samsung device, you will have the My Files app on your phone by default. And if you have just a, uh, usually just a generic or a vanilla Android type of a phone, like a Pixel, uh, you will have the Files app by Google. They're very, very similar. The file structures are exactly the same as what Eric has uh, outlined here for Windows. Some things uh, may be, you may see some, some different types of files or different types of folders rather on your device, but the concepts are all the same. You, you can have folders within folders and you can have, you can have one file in each folder if you want. Um, you can have a folder called stuff and you just dump stuff there that you don't necessarily need to keep track of. Uh, for long periods of time, you just need a temporary storing place. However, I will warn you from experience that stuff gets very, very large, very, very quickly and very cumbersome. So be careful with uh, just temporary dumping, uh, dumping folders like that. Uh, again, with Android, you do have the flexibility of going out into the Play Store and you can, there are so many different file managers out there and a lot of them have some small different idiosyncrasies and just some minute differences. The three main ones that I've listed here is Files by Google, My Files by Samsung, and another one called File Commander. File Commander by Mobi Systems is very, very advanced. It allows you to see two different folders open at once. It makes your movement of files very, very easy going from one folder to another. And there's also some other very, very advanced features of that particular file system that uh, we could definitely go into in another webinar, but it's definitely beyond the scope here of uh, doing things like FTP file transfer protocol and transferring files over uh, over different connection types. Uh, moving files and folders around, it's all the same concepts uh, on an Android system. For example, on my particular phone here, the uh, Galaxy Note 10 Plus, uh, if when you go in, you, when you open up uh, my files, you'll see various different folders. Uh, for example, I'm going to, and I don't have TalkBack turned on here, uh, I will let me get uh, my talk back open here in just a second. Let me find this. And I'm also finding my folders right now as well. Where is my, or excuse me, my files. Okay, okay. I'm going to open up my files. Voice assistant on so internal can... storage. Thank you. And I'm going back to the main menu. Showing items one to four to four. 
So in this particular instance, I have a couple of different options. I can look at the internal storage of my phone. I can, if I had an SD card on my phone, I can go into the SD card. And I also have several different cloud types of storage, uh, OneDrive, uh, Samsung uh, Cloud Drive, the Google Drive. So you can also go in and you can explore your different cloud-based uh, filing systems here as well, or file services as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my internal storage. Internal storage, 8.38 gigabytes flash Internal storage, Shortcuts and, one to nine and by default, this particular app will show all of your folders first. DCIM. My downloads folder. So I have, to, I have to, okay, looks like I have two different download folders. Not sure why. Voice recorder, October 19th. So there's all kinds. So and all I'm doing is I am actually dragging my finger around. You can also use your flick gestures. Uh, with talk back or with voice assistance to kind of flick back and forth between the different uh, folders. Uh, you can also, when you get down to the bottom of the screen, you would see all your different files. With this particular files, uh, file manager, very, very easy to move files and folders. All you will do is you will do a long tap and then you will get uh, different options down at the very bottom of your screen. You'll have delete, You'll have details, you'll have copy, and you'll have move. Now on the Android platform, move is the same thing as when Eric referred to control X is the same thing as cut. You also, for your files, you will also have the option to share. This is where it gets really cool on your mobile device, okay? Uh, sharing, when you actually share a file, you can actually share it through any kind of um, app that you have on your particular device that supports file sharing. For example, you could put something in your messages app, you could attach a file in WhatsApp or GroupMe or Teams or anything like that. You can also transfer something from your phone if you have a bunch of photos or music that are on your, on your phone or your tablet. You can also uh, select those, full, uh, those files and again, you can move them or you could also share them onto say your Google Drive, your Microsoft OneDrive, any of your cloud storage. So it's very, very easy to do this. Also, uh, some files can actually be put into say different notes apps, such as Google Keep Notes or Samsung Notes, for instance, you can attach a file to those notes. You can type up a little note there. So you've got a big project going and you need to attach say different files that you've got on a hold of like um, say budgeting spreadsheets, laboring spreadsheets, a document of requirement, something like that nature, you can actually put those all in a different note. And it's just another way for you to be able to keep track of different files, folders, and have access, very, very quick access and easy access to your particular information. So with that being said, um, Android, again, is very, very powerful. It's very flexible, but Again, with Android, as we've talked about in webinars before, that is also kind of the pain point of Android is there is so much flexibility there that sometimes it can actually get a little bit complicated. But rest assured, everything that Eric just went over is it's there, just a little bit different navigation with your taps. Uh, I believe iOS is gonna be the same way just a little bit different than you are, than how you do things on uh, your PC with JAWS or with Narrator. Um, all the functionality is there, cut, copy, paste, select all, and uh, but you do pick up the sharing feature there that uh, really makes it nice and easy for you to be able to, to share your files. So that's, uh, uh, that's it on Android in a, in a nutshell there, Eric. You did a really good job Ooh. on the first part here. and. And of explaining everything, it just comes down to doing things a little bit differently. Absolutely, and, and Android is so robust, it's ridiculous. Uh, I'm not going to bag, I'm not going to uh, rag on iOS. However, it's not anywhere near as robust as what Android can do with the FTP and, and whatnot, but you definitely can um, do some cool little things 
uh, actually the whole files app on the uh, on the iOS environment is relatively new comparatively, at least to the Android File Explorer. I know has been around for quite some time, uh, but the files app it's pretty new. So for anyone that didn't know, your iPhones now come with a files app, and in here files are kept, they're stored. Whatever you download, for example, from file uh, the internet, or for any employees at the web, at a uh, TAB, a Travis Association for the Blind, if you use Paycom, you navigate to say your urine tax forms. You can view a PDF of your W-2 for the year. You can click download on it, and that PDF is instantly sent to your downloads folder, right? And you can click, you can keep that, you can share that from your files app, for example, with uh, say a, uh, a tax, some sort of tax uh, preparer, if you will, your CPA, someone who's gonna uh, help you do your taxes, right? Boom, now they've got EC electronic access to that and they're able to do your taxes, streamline your taxes because of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate a little bit. I want you to understand this is not as robust. Uh, to my knowledge, you cannot really create more folders but you can view what's in these folders and you can move what's in these folders. I haven't found a way to create more folders. Uh, Apple is very restrictive with that sort of stuff and they will continue to be so. They will dig their, their head in the sand. They will drag their feet because it's Apple and that is what they're notorious for. Because when it comes to file management, they are very, very, I wouldn't say authoritarian, but definitely very guarded. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my files folder. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna slow down the speed first of all. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tell Siri to open my files app. Actually, let me show you where it is. Most phones out of the box will be on page two. So page one of two. Page two of two. So at page two now, I'm gonna find utilities for file, files. Right by the utilities folder is your files. Files, browse, back button. And immediately you put into browse. So I'm gonna hit the back button just to just to show you once again, like on Windows, the master list that Apple has when it comes to their files. I'm gonna hit back button up here on the top. More button. All right. So here we have at the top left we have more. And what this can do uh, is it will allow you to connect to a server. And actually, I stand corrected. Hold on a second. Connect to server. Yeah, so you can connect to a server. I've never done this. I assume it would be the, like an FTP address or something uh, if you wanted to view files at a remote location. That's pretty cool. Edit. And edit here will allow you to do things like rename or uh, uh, move things around. So I'm going to go ahead and hit dismiss. And let's just see what we have inside of the files. Browse, heading. So browse, heading. Search, search field. Uh, we can search here. If you have a lot of files or folders, you can search for something. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can definitely search for something. And I, all right, now let's go ahead and write swipe. Dictate button. You can dictate search. Locations, button, heading. Here we Expanded. go. Locations, Actions button. Available. Collapse content. Activate. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write arrows to see what locations we have. iCloud Drive. We have iCloud Actions Drive on my iPhone. On my iPhone. So as I said on the on the handout, iCloud Drive is just like Dropbox, just like Google Drive. It is a cloud-based place where you can stick files in, and you can sync those across multiple platforms as long as you have the proper software. Or you can go on iCloud Drive, I believe it's at iCloud.com and you can log into your iCloud account and then you can view what files you've uploaded. I think by default, Apple gives you five gigabytes free storage before you can start, uh, before you have to pay for extra storage. Uh, so there you can, uh, you can view things. So I'm gonna show you how you can move something from your iPhone onto iCloud Drive, okay? All right, we have recently deleted. So if you accidentally delete something, come over here next to uh, on my iPhone, you will see recently deleted. Let's swipe, continue swiping to the right. Favorites, button. Favorites. Downloads. Downloads. Tags, button, red. Now, 
Downloads is the, the place where all of your content from the internet and Paycom and any other place that you download on your iPhone. So whatever you download on your iPhone from anywhere, any application, any app uh, web page, it will go here to the downloads folder. So let's go ahead and see what we have in here. I'm going to open it. Nothing in my downloads folder. I'm very boring. Okay. Now let's, uh, I'm going to go ahead and swipe down. So we have, that's how we navigate the different uh, ways we can interact with something. We put focus on it by swiping to it. And then we use the up and down swipes with one finger to uh, navigate through the different forms of interaction. So here, default. the default is activate what we just did, open the folder. We could swipe down, copy, copy duplicate. duplicate. And to be honest with me, this seems a little redundant, but what I've gathered is duplicate will just do that. It will duplicate it right next to it. Uh, I don't know why you'd want that, but it's there. Move, Move and that's just like cut. Delete. Delete. Info. Info. Here you can view things like metadata about the file, the size, the, uh, the different uh, attributes that the file contains. Tags. Tags. You can, you can view the tags. If you add any of those, that's a bit of a more advanced feature. But you can also search for tags. Uh, it makes things, uh, for example, if you have hundreds or thousands of files, you can search by tags. Uh, that is completely up to the discretion of the user, though, to add those tags. Rename. Rename something. Unfavorite. Unfavorite. This is in my favorites. So I'm going to go ahead and unfavorite it. Share. Oh, unfavorite. We have share. Hold on. Share. share. Compress. Compress. Compress will zip things. And by the way, guys, this is super new to the iPhone. For the longest time, I believe it was until iOS 13, you could not deal with any sort of archived files, like a zip file. Now, for example, if you were to download a zip file containing different spreadsheets or uh, different uh, Word documents or a, a season of TV shows that you purchased, you could not unzip that on the iPhone. But now you come to the downloads folder, you hit compress if it's not compressed, or if this is a zip file, you'll see uncompress. So you hit uncompress and it's going to generate an actual folder for you. So that's pretty cool. That is really cool because, again, you could not zip or unzip files inside of your iPhone. You had to take them to your desktop first or your Windows PC, unzip them, and then drop them into your, uh, into your, uh, into your iPhone via some sort of sync method using iTunes. Oh, the dark days. Drag item. You can drag an item. I would rather copy it activate. and activate. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to unfavorite. Drag, share, unfavorite. I'm going to... Oh, that would be my Metro X who's calling me, reminding me of my ride tomorrow. 7.23 p.m. Good thing it was on silent. All right. Files. So I'm going to go ahead Actions. and unfavorite downloads, and then we're going to go find it. So Three items. Browse. Browse. Backup. Browse. Recent. Fake. Download. Down. Remove. Act. Remove. Activate. Um, favorites. Buttons. Oh, favorites. Downloads. Okay. Remove. I'm going to remove Online it from iPhone. my favorites. Oh. Recently. Favorites. Collapse. Con activate. Uh, Collapse. Con activate. Downloads. Uh, Fault. Remove. There we go. Active, I'm going to remove it from my favorites. Boom, it's gone. Tags. So um, now I'm going to go look for this. I'm, I believe it's in my iCloud Actions drive. Recently on my iCloud drive. Selected. Download. Short Download. There it is. Folder. Downloads. So I could move this. Actions I'm going to go ahead and copy the downloads folder. Copy. Duplicate. Copy. All right. Now I'm going to take, I uh, copied it. Browse. Now I'm going to back. Browse. And then I drop it to my iPhone. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Move. Duplicate. Move. move. Double tap to dismiss pop up with cancel. Double tap to dismiss new folder button. Move. Tim. Resident qualifying criteria will resident. Okay. Double tap. So <laughs> it's not letting me paste it, but you just saw a new folder option. So if you click on move, I, I just taught myself something. If you click on move, it will give you the option to create a new folder. So that's really cool. That might be a little new. 
because I remember back in the day, if you hit move, it would just carry out the option. Uh, it would just take that pot, that folder or that file and just boom, cut it. And then you would make it appear by going to the place that you wanted to paste it, down, swiping down and tapping on paste. So that's pretty cool that that's there. Um, that's how you can create a new folder. That's really cool. That is actually really, really cool. But that's really the gist of it. Find something, swipe down on it to interact with it, to copy, to paste it, to, uh, to delete it, to remove it forever. Remember when you delete something, it actually goes to your deleted folder, which is like the recycle bin. So in there, you have another uh, step before you can actually get rid of it. Or if you accidentally delete something, you can go in there and retrieve it. And that works just like deleting. But uh, that's, that's essentially the file up in a nutshell. I also want to let you know that the iPhone is very limited in the files it can open, right? And it, you have to have the proper applications to open files, right? You won't be able to open files from within the files folder. It works just like File Explorer. You need the correct application. For example, if you have some sort of file in a Windows media video format, couldn't open it. WMV, can't. It's, 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 and it's the antithesis to uh, anything Apple. So you'd have to convert it to an Apple-friendly uh, video format like MP4, and that would be done on your Windows PC. Share is another good one. Uh, if you go to a file and hit share on it, you can have the option to text message it, to email it to someone, to uh, airdrop it to another iPhone. So that will allow you to do that sort of thing, uh, those, those sort of things, I apologize. But, um, that's essentially the file that happened in a nutshell. It's very simple to use. There are no keystrokes. It's just a matter of finding something and swiping down on it and then double tapping on that action to carry it out. That's all there is to it. That's the file app. Pretty cool stuff. Um, that's it. I mean, that's basically it. And as Dan said, there's a really not much difference between these three platforms. Maybe iOS is separated a little bit by how uh, restrictive it can be, um, but you can do essentially the very basic file management tasks on all three platforms, and you can act. You can do a lot of your productive work on all three platforms. You can do your Word documents. You can do your Excel spreadsheets, and you know that's a webinar in and of itself, right? But you can do different uh, tasks, the same tasks in different ways using different programs, but it will still get the job done. Uh, and but that's essentially the uh, the file management system in a nutshell. Seven twenty eight. Seven twenty eight. Uh, Dan, do you see any sort of hands or questions in the? Don't in see. The no, don't see okay, any don't hands see or questions cool. or anything at this point. Um, uh, very very quiet tonight. Um, very. You did mention something very uh, very very good in that on the Android platforms the same way you have to have an app on your phone on your device to be <laughs> able to understand and open that particular uh, file type. Uh, zip files or compressed files, those get very, very sticky, very, very fast on on I think both iOS and on Android. Yes. Um, you know, the zip compression is probably the most, one of the most popular, if not the most popular. So there's a lot of apps out there to Absolutely. uncompress files. I know on the Android side of the house, you also have what's called tarballs or .tar, and then you'll actually have another compression on top of that. It's a gzip, so you'll have a .tar .gz. And then we're getting now into uber technical algorithms and all kinds of other stuff as to how it shrinks files down. But um, just having the, the correct file, um, same thing with the music files and whatnot. Android's the same way. You got to have some kind of a uh, an app on your particular phone or on your device to be able to uh, uh, open and read that particular file. File, and otherwise, it's just taking up space on your device. <laughs> that's true. Yep. I think that that's a great place to wrap up. We do want to let you guys know, though, the uh, webinar on December 29th will be a. Uh, Will be canceled as it's it will take place during the uh, during the New Year's weekend week and I'm sure a lot of you will be uh, very enjoying your uh, very busy enjoying yourselves with your family and friends. Uh, stay safe out there, especially during this pandemic. 
Uh, we will be sending out an email reminder that that webinar will be postponed to two weeks after the 29th of December. Uh, but we do look forward to uh, we do look forward to spending it with you guys uh, mid January, or early January. And uh, again, if there are more suggestions, please let us know. The next webinar I plan is to showcase internet browsing on all three platforms, just like browsing your files. There's a way to browse web pages on the internet, and I can't wait to share that with you guys because just like files, if you can't browse the internet, you can't get your job done at 99% of, of uh, desk jobs today, right? It's just impossible. Everything is on the cloud, and the cloud is on the internet. So yep. for Dan Hart, this is Eric Cifuentes. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in four weeks. Take care, everybody. <clears throat> Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.